ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಜ್ಞಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ಯತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದೀ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹಿನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ so as described in the second chapter of the bhagavad gita the soul has very very wonderful characteristics some of which we already discussed so we will discuss more today one question that i would like to raise at this stage is why does krishna say that we have to be equal towards happiness and distress we should be undisturbed by distresses that may come certainly we have experienced happiness is enjoyable and distress is painful so why would krishna say this we have to understand krishna is explaining that these feelings are temporary and they are felt under ignorance and what is that ignorance the ignorance is i am this body so fundamentally something is wrong in our understanding about our own self therefore to correct this misunderstanding is very very important for anybody who wants to actually get out of this repetition of birth and death it is very important to get out of this ignorance and therefore lord krishna is personally instructing us in this bhagavad gita one more point that is explained in the scriptures is that although there is nothing good in this world materially nothing is good but we have got some mental concoction and we say something is good something else is bad in chaitanya charitamrita another scripture the author shri la krishna das kaviraj goswami he says dvaite bhadra abhadra gyana sava mano dharma ei bhala ei manda ei sava bhrama this means in the material world there is something we consider as good and something else is bad but they are simply mental concoctions they are not a fact in fact everything is only bad in this world there is nothing really good just like a man is suffering from some disease lying on the hospital bed and he is uh, having so much of uh, uh, pain and he is eating bitter medicine and he is very 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 sick and when some friend goes to see him and the friend asks how are you feeling today he says oh i am feeling fine i am all right now where is the question of this person lying on the hospital bed actually considering himself as fine it just not possible uh, he is lying on the bed he is not able to move around he is not able to do any normal activities he is taking medicine he is having so much of discomfort he is suffering pain and he is telling i am fine i am all right so our condition is the same please don't think that somebody is healthy they are fine no we have to compare our present situation 
in this world with our original spiritual situation as i told you earlier the original spiritual situation is no disease no death no old age no miseries no scarcity no anxiety no worry no fear as compared to that situation what is our present situation it is filled with anxiety filled with worries filled with fear filled with so many dangers filled with so many calamities filled with uh, so many miseries so there is no comparison at all so therefore <clears throat> in this material world even if somebody thinks i am very prosperous i am nicely situated they are ignorant of the fact that uh, uh, very soon there is going to be death and after death there is the next life janma mrutyu jara vyadi dukha dosha anudarshanam anudarshanam means repetition cyclically we go through this birth disease old age and death again birth disease old age and death so the cyclically we are going through this a learned person an intelligent person considers where is what is the value of happiness in this world when i have to die and after death i have to enter another body and while living this body i have to experience disease and old age and so many other miseries so many other anxieties as soon as i die i will be forced to enter a mother's womb and in the mother's womb 9 months i had to be in such a uh, awkward position all of us have gone through it but we have forgotten uh, every one of us we were in the mother's womb for 9 months what a suffering that is that we have to hear from the scriptures because we have experienced that but we have forgot that is one of the characteristics of material existence our present uh, uh, way of living that the tendency to forget is very prominent our first forgetfulness is forgetfulness of god krishna and after that we selectively remember some things and many many things many facts we forget so we forget what experience we have gone through in our mother's womb for 9 months so it is very very uh, uncomfortable very painful situation so if you want to be really happy the scriptures the acharyas the saintly persons they advise try to become krishna conscious that will make you really happy otherwise if you are simply disturbed by material conditions then you are not in a very good situation you are not in a very good position so we also discussed yesterday that the presence of the spirit soul inside this body in the heart region is perceived by the presence of consciousness the soul is a very tiny particle it is there in the body but it is invisible but the tiny particle of spirit it spreads its influence throughout the body in the form of consciousness that is why any part of my body if a small ant even bites the toe or any part of the body immediately i have experience of pain so that is the proof of the presence of the soul within the body the presence of consciousness which is spread throughout the body just like if there is sun in the sky data and sometimes the sun gets covered by a cloud it is not the sun which is covered by the cloud it is our vision of the sun that is 
covered by the cloud. If the cloud is few hundred miles uh, wide. The sun is millions of miles big. So a few hundred, 500 mile cloud cannot cover a million miles big sun, not possible. So it is only covering our vision. So when the cloud covers my vision of the sun, even though the sun is in the sky, I still can ascertain the sun is there because of the daylight, the sunlight. Similarly, even though we cannot see or we cannot perceive the spirit soul, the tiny particle of spirit inside the body, by the presence of consciousness, we can say there is a soul in the body. Because as soon as the soul leaves the body, this body becomes a dead body and there is no more symptom of the soul which is consciousness, no more consciousness. So this way we can understand the presence of the soul in the body through consciousness. This consciousness we have to understand is individual consciousness we are talking about that is I can perceive the pleasures and pains of my body only. You can perceive the pleasures and pains of your body. If an ant is biting your uh, toe, I cannot feel the pain, you feel the pain. So your consciousness due to you being in that particular body that you are inhabiting is spread over your body. It is limited. Your consciousness is limited. My consciousness is limited to my body. Similarly, every living being has got limited consciousness. Whereas the Supreme Lord Krishna, his consciousness is spread everywhere and his consciousness is unlimited. This difference always exists between each one of us and the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna has got unlimited consciousness. Everything about Krishna is unlimited. Krishna has unlimited power, unlimited strength, unlimited wealth, unlimited beauty, unlimited knowledge. Krishna has everything unlimited. Krishna is unlimited person. We are limited. Always we are limited. And we cannot become unlimited by any method. Sometimes people think, let me do meditation and become God. No. We cannot become God by any means. Not possible by doing meditation or by doing any uh, yoga. No. Nobody can become God. One more fact is, we have been hearing about the soul being unchangeable. The soul is eternally the same. If I am a tiny spirit soul, very, very tiny, I remain that tiny spirit soul eternally. God is unlimited spirit. He is eternally unlimited spirit. So please remember this that our consciousness is limited, it is spread only over this body and uh, God or Krishna, his consciousness is spread everywhere, he is unlimitedly conscious. He is conscious of every body, he is conscious of every person, he is conscious of the entire creation and he knows everything that is happening in his creation, in every part of the creation and his ability to know is also unlimited. So, uh, this difference between Krishna and ourselves. Now, one more fact is Krishna is seated in our heart as the super soul or Paramatma and I am also sitting in this body as the Jivatma. Jivatma. I am Jivatma. Jiva means the living being and Krishna is the super soul, Paramatma. 
आत्मा परमात्मा ब्रह्मन पर ब्रह्मन लाइक दैट दिस डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंड अवर सेल्फ ऑलवेज देर इज वन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक सफिक्स और प्रिफिक्स दैट इज एडेड कृष्णा इज परम ब्रह्म परम धाम परम पवित्रम परमम पवित्रम इज सुप्रीम प्योर इज सुप्रीम ब्रह्मन इज सुप्रीम अबोर्ड इज सुप्रीम रेस्टिंग प्लेस और शेल्टर फॉर एवरी वन सो लाइक दैट कृष्णा इज characters uniquely different and distinct from all of us from every living being no living being can become god or can become uh, as powerful or as uh, great as god that's not possible also we discussed about the size of the soul the dimension 1 10000 part of the tip of the head point in size so it's very 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 tiny this is this uh, information is given in the upanishads in the shvetashvatar upanishad it is given it is a spiritual atom it's a very very tiny soul is a spiritual atom and it can be perceived by perfect intelligence this is a way how to perceive the soul perfect intelligence that's what the upanishad explains hmm. now there are some analogies given how the influence of the soul is spread throughout the body whether the body is a tiny body of a very insignificant germ or it is the body of a huge elephant or a whale uh, it is the soul spreads the influence over the entire body so it is just like the example is given when we take some medicine then the active principle of the medicine is spread throughout the body through the blood circulation similarly let's say somebody uh, wants to check out the taste of potassium cyanide potassium cyanide is a deadly poison uh, if a small bit of this potassium cyanide is placed on the tongue many scientists have been trying to ascertain what is the taste of this potassium cyanide because they cannot find out the taste because as soon as it is placed on the tongue instantly there is death so you can imagine how fast that uh, active principle of the potassium cyanide the poison spreads and immediately kills the person just he places it before he can even write down what is the taste immediately death he is not the scientists are not able to ascertain the taste so like this if a material thing the potency of which can be spread in almost instantaneously so what to speak of the soul the soul spreads its influence throughout the body even though it is very 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 tiny so the understanding is again another example is given the sun is localized in a particular place in the universe compared to the size of the universe the sun is quite small as a planet but that sun it gives heat and light to millions of planets all over the universe the sun is in one place but the sun shine is spread throughout the universe similarly the soul is localized in one place a tiny particle spiritual atom but its influence is spread throughout this body compared to the size of the soul this body is very 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 big very big but still the influence of the soul is spread perfectly throughout this body and that is the uh, potency or potential of the soul i should remember this that's the potential of the soul 
now vedic science versus uh, modern science uh, if we try to compare vedic science says that the individual soul that is each one of us within this body i am seated in the heart region and along with me krishna as the super soul is also seated in the same body next to me so the soul and the super soul both are seated in this body and the soul is the source of all energies in this body the all the energies are emanating from the heart but it is not the heart which is actually the source of energy it is the soul now modern science accepts the heart as the seat of all energies but the modern science they are unable to ascertain that the soul is the source of these energies that they are not able to ascertain because they cannot detect the soul by their instruments or by their uh, experiments or whatever but uh, as the scriptures explain you can perceive the presence of the soul by perfect intelligence now the uh, soul itself sometimes people mistake it to be something like the soul and the super soul atma and parmatma they think is one is same some people have this uh, misunderstanding wrong understanding no atma and parmatma or the soul and the super soul are two always two different identities now sometimes people think that after liberation i become one with the with god or with the super soul no there is no possibility as i said the bhagavad gita ascertains or emphasizes that the soul cannot be uh, broken cannot be joined cannot be changed so a soul cannot be split cannot be cut so therefore there is no such thing as soul becomes one with the super soul no that is uh, never a uh, a possibility never a correct understanding now krishna is emphasizing one more point that the body is perishable and the soul is indestructible is eternally present so therefore he is telling arjuna don't lament for the loss of the body the body is perishable it is going to die if not today after a few years or maximum after 100 years the body is going to die and the body cannot be saved similarly the soul cannot be killed cannot be destroyed cannot be cut cannot be in any way uh, destroyed it soul will never perish it's imperishable so therefore krishna is telling arjuna in doing your duty you need not lament for the loss of the uh, person the person is a soul and the person is eternal and after a person uh, dies or leaves the body then the person gets another body so what is the basis of getting the next body it is according to one's work in this life so the practical application of this fact that we are going to get the next body based on the activities we do in our present life we should follow the religious principles as given in the authoritative scriptures then only we can elevate ourselves in our next life if we don't follow the scriptural injunctions we don't uh, go by we don't uh, 
uh, adhere to the religious principles given in the scriptures, then we degrade ourselves. And degradation means we have to suffer uh, the um, inconveniences, the distress, the pains, the miseries, the dangers, the difficulties, the natural calamities. Especially in the lower uh, species, they don't have a sense of uh, understanding that they are suffering and there can be some remedy for it. They don't have. Only a human being thinks that I don't want suffering, still suffering is forced upon me. Can I get some immediate relief? That's the immediate thought that comes when there is some pain or some, uh, some distress. Immediately can I get some relief? But the animals, they suffer, but they don't know what to do about the suffering. You see, because they don't have developed intelligence. So degradation to lower species of life is very, very dangerous. Later on, Krishna will describe it. the greatest danger for a human being is that a person neglects to uh, cultivate Krishna consciousness, spiritual life, and thereby degrades himself or herself to animal species. Next body is certain. After death, we are going to get another body. What kind of body am I going to get? That we should inquire. Whatever body am I going to get? So, one has to at least ensure that one is elevated. And it's very easy to elevate oneself in the next life by simply following some very uh, basic principles of religious uh, uh, conduct given in the scriptures. Now, we cannot manufacture our own uh, system of religion. Uh, it is given by God and it is universal. It is same for everyone. So there is no question of uh, which uh, faith you believe in or which uh, uh, system of religion you accept. There is no question of accepting or believing. Uh, no, it is uh, universal. <clears throat> Just like this body, every human body, uh, there is no consideration when there is an infection spreading and people get some disease. There is no consideration whether you believe or what your faith is whether somebody is Indian or somebody is American or somebody is Hindu or somebody is a, a, it doesn't matter. All these bodily designations and mental uh, um, situation doesn't matter. It is independent, it is irrespective of that. So therefore, we should always know that uh, the codes of God is what is called as dharma and the dharma is equally applicable for every human being. Not just every human being actually is applicable for every living being, but at least human beings should follow because they have the intelligence to understand uh, what is this dharma all about. Krishna also highlights in uh, one of the verses, the soul is indestructible because of which he is telling Arjuna, there is no reason for you to uh, avoid this uh, Dharma Yuddha. Uh, because the soul cannot be killed, neither somebody can even detect the soul to attack the person. They cannot even detect the soul. So, cannot be even seen, it's so tiny. So, how they can destroy the soul, it's not possible. So, what they destroy or what they kill is only the body. So, in a Dharma Yuddha, for a Kshatriya to fight according to religious principles is proper. Is proper. On the other hand, if a Kshatriya does not participate in the Dharma Yuddha, then for 
uh, neglecting his duty, he will be punished. Hmm? So, for a Kshatriya, in a Dharma Yuddha, if he does not participate, it is sinful. And for any person who is not uh, uh, there is no dharma yuddha. Whimsically, somebody wants to uh, simply challenge another king and uh, uh, simply take away his kingdom by force because uh, I am st uh, stronger than him or I am more powerful than him. Might is right. Uh, simply uh, attacking like that and and trying to uh, become powerful that that is against uh, the principles of dharma such a king is punishable by the laws of god such a king is punishable so he has to suffer uh, punishment in uh, future so uh, we have to understand if it is not a dharma yuddha a kshatriya should not fight and if it is dharma yuddha kshatriya must fight so that's what arjuna has been told that uh, that's a dharma yuddha you should perform your duty as a kshatriya the spirit soul is important not the body this is uh, to be also understood because the spirit soul is the active principle that is keeping the body alive and is the body is moving only because of the presence of the spirit soul the body is not as important as the soul though we don't neglect the body we maintain this body as long as we are living in this body we have to maintain the body but we cannot spend all the time simply for the maintenance of the body we should save time for uh, cultivating spiritual life i'll take some questions now uh, the first question that is here before me what is Mayavadi theory that is mentioned in the second chapter of this Bhagavad Gita? Yes, there is a philosophy or a theory called Mayavadi theory where the one set of people they, they think or they have this uh, philosophy that uh, there is no difference between the soul and the super soul. It's also called Advaita Vada or Advaita Vedanta or Advaita philosophy. No difference. That's what they say. No difference between soul and super soul. No difference between me and God. Their theory or their philosophy is I am God or you are God. Everyone is God. So this is completely wrong because in all the scriptures it is told we are very 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 tiny part of God though we have got the same quality as God we are spiritual by nature God is supreme spiritual being we are same quality but we are very 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 tiny and God is unlimited person unlimited uh, unlimitedly powerful God is a source of everyone and everything. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo. In the Vedanta Sutra, it is said, Janmagyasya Yataha. Hmm. Uh, so, like this, it is very clearly explained. God is above everybody, He is a supreme being, and we are very, very tiny. We are innumerable, there are countless living beings. But God is one. God is one. We are countless living beings, very, very tiny. We are always controlled in all circumstances, at all times. We are always controlled. Whereas God is the control, supreme controller. He is the controller. There is nobody above him. There is nobody equal to him. Everyone is subordinate to him. Asamordva. This is Sanskrit. Asamordva, asama, nobody is equal to him and nobody is greater than him. Na urdva, nobody is greater than him. So everybody is subordinate to him. 
So this we have to understand. So the Mayavadi theory mentioned in the second chapter is being mentioned by Prabhupada as a, a, a fallacious theory, a wrong theory, a misleading theory. So that is uh, uh, explained by Prabhupada that it is a misleading theory. Um, second question, is the lifespan fixed at the time of birth itself or is it subject to change? For example, if someone has dedicated his life in mission of Krishna consciousness, will he have a longer lifespan? Yes, the lifespan is fixed at the time of birth, but it can change under some particular circumstances. As I explained the earlier, the example of the Kauravas, because they insulted the most chaste lady, Draupadi, so their lifespan became reduced and they died an untimely death, Akala Mrityu. Or somebody gets the blessings of a saintly person, can uh, live a full lifespan or can even extend the lifespan, it is possible. Now what about those who are devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement, dedicated their life entirely for this uh, movement. Now devotees never ask or pray to Krishna that please increase my lifespan, no. Whatever our lifespan, we want to simply practice Krishna consciousness and perfect our life to actually go to the spiritual world to live with Krishna. That's our destination. So for us, it's not important what is the lifespan. The example is given in the Bhagavatam, Parikshit Maharaj was cursed to die within one week. He had only one week's time. But he decided within that one week, he is going to inquire into what is the duty of a person who is about to die, how can he prepare for death. And then within the one week, he sat and heard the Srimad Bhagavatam and he perfected his life and went back to God, went back to Krishna Sabha. Number Question number three, how can one remember Krishna at a time of death if he is in coma? Good question. Now please understand, coma means the person inside that body has withdrawn his consciousness because of this comatose condition. So the person is living inside the body, person is conscious, but the consciousness is not, uh, uh, is not externally active. So externally the person doesn't know what's happening. He is not externally conscious, but inside the person is alive, active, uh, living, all the, all the awareness, everything is there. Of course, a person can experience that I am not able to communicate to others, I am not able to see others, I am not able to interact with others, my own family members, but the person is within the body the person is living so before death comes if the person has practiced spiritual life and can continue to practice spiritual life even the comatose condition yeah. if somebody had practiced chanting before going into that comatose condition so in the coma condition also within that body they can keep remembering krishna they can keep chanting Hare krishna that is possible so, how to remember Krishna at time of death? By practice of chanting Hare Krishna, by practice of thinking of Krishna, by practice of remembering uh, Krishna in the form of his deity, in the, as the holy name, as the uh, description given in the Bhagavatam, etc. So, that can go on irrespective of the medical condition of the body. The soul can always be active spiritually irrespective of the bodily condition. So therefore it doesn't matter whether somebody is in coma or somebody is not in coma. They can prepare for death and they can in that way uh, prepare themselves for death means at the time of death Krishna will give the remembrance to those who have practiced remembering him before death. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.